Well, as I said earlier, Nicola Sturgeon was at that meeting and the First Minister joins us now from Edinburgh. Thank you for joining us, First Minister. You're meeting Theresa May tomorrow in Edinburgh. What are you going to say to her? Well, firstly, I'll say congratulations on becoming Prime Minister. Uh, after that, of course, I'm hoping to build a constructive working relationship with Theresa May. Everybody knows we've got deep political differences, but you know both of us have got a duty to represent the people we serve, and I think that demands of both of us a healthy respect for each other's position and a determination to work together where we can. So that's very much the approach that I will take into the meeting. I hope it's reciprocated, and you know again, I don't think it will come as any surprise to anybody uh, to know that it's likely that the top issue on the agenda we'll discuss tomorrow is the issue of the European Union. Um, I am determined that we protect Scotland's interests and you know many of our interests, our businesses, our universities, citizens, workers' rights, all of these uh, interests are now at risk because of the Brexit vote. Of course Scotland didn't vote to leave the EU so I'm now determined to find ways to protect those interests and the question is uh, can I do that through the UK process and my message to Theresa May will be the more open and flexible that process can be then the better. Uh, I've um, been very clear that it may uh, reach a conclusion that independence is the only way we can protect those interests but I've also said I want to examine every option along the way. Well her, her opening remarks outside Downing Street to the crowds yesterday didn't seem to make a very flexible approach when she talked about the precious, precious bond and how deeply, deeply she felt about the union. Is this a Prime Minister you think you're going to be able to do business with? Well, look, I, I think it would have been surprising if uh, a Conservative and Unionist Prime Minister had said she no longer felt that about the union. You know, everybody knows that Theresa May and her party believe in the union as in the United Kingdom and that I believe in independence. What I would say though is that I think for those who advocate the United Kingdom uh, there is a, an onus of responsibility now in light of the EU referendum to demonstrate that the UK is capable of protecting Scotland's interests because those interests, the ability of our businesses to trade, our universities to take part in world-class research, our workers' rights uh, to be protected, our ability to influence big global policy on climate change, for example, these interests are now all at risk because a UK-wide vote has threatened us with exit from the EU. So for those who still believe in the UK, I think the onus is on them to prove that it can still uh, protect and defend Scotland's interests. Now, I am determined to find the best ways of protecting Scotland's interests and I'm prepared to work to see if we can find options within the UK context and the UK process that will now take place to do that. I've been very open that it may well be that if we want to protect those interests, the best or the only option will be to consider whether we want to become an independent country and that's a decision that Scotland would have to take if we get there. But I'm open to examining all options and I hope tomorrow I encounter a Prime Minister who's not going to have her mind changed on the Union any more than I'm going to have mind changed on independence, but a Prime Minister that is just as willing as I am to be open-minded and constructive about the options that might lie ahead. We talked about options just now. I mean, there does seem to be some confusion among Ministers in the new lineup, uh, but perhaps a chink of light for you and your case from David Mundell today when he effectively he said, well, the ball's in your court, come up with some options for us to consider. What will be your well, top priority? The, the good news for David Mundell, who, well, you know, I've just been having a meeting of some of the best brains in Scotland and indeed overseas uh, to look at how we start to influence this process and indeed come up with those options. You know, in the Standing Council meeting I've just had, we've had a former uh, judge of the European Court of Justice, two former very senior UK diplomats, uh, some people with direct experience of working in the European Commission, some you know, serious and hefty economic expertise, politicians, not just from the SNP, but from the Labour Party, a whole range of expertise. It's now looking at exactly what the options are for Scotland. I said on the morning after the referendum, I didn't underestimate the difficulty and the challenge of this. The opportunity, of course, is that we're in uncharted territory, and when you're in uncharted territory, you have an opportunity to try to shape the future. So my message to the Prime Minister tomorrow is not to try to convince her Scotland should be independent, because she's not going to convince me that it shouldn't, but to see if we can agree that in this very difficult time, a difficult time that's not of Scotland's making, that we should be open-minded to these options. Because I, I, I say again, you know, there's a... A big onus, I think, in those who say Scotland should continue to be part of the UK to prove in light of the referendum vote that that's still 
it protects and, and serves our interests because frankly there's a big question mark over that now. But what about David Mundell's remarks and, and giving, asking you to come up, the Scottish Government to come up with a range of options? What, what would be your top priority? What, 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 what do you say to that? Well, look, look, we don't even... I've just said that's exactly what we're doing. That's, I've just been in St Andrew's house behind me here with, as I say, some eminent experts beginning that process of work. But, of course, we don't yet know what process the UK is going to take forward. We don't know what the UK's negotiating stance is going to be. You know, I've heard different uh, opinions expressed by different members of the Tory party, I think even different ministers within Theresa May's new government, uh, expressing different, different opinions about whether or not they think the UK should remain in the single market. So we're doing that work. Obviously, we need to also understand the process that the UK is going through. So you know, what I'd say to David Mundell is there'll be no shortage of ideas and suggestions and options coming forward from the Scottish Government. That's not the problem here. Uh, what we need to know, though, is that when we bring those options forward, we're not going to have doors closed prematurely uh, or you know, a refusal to consider those options. Because if that happens, then people are very, very quickly going to conclude that we can't protect Scotland's interests the way we need to protect them through this UK process. First Minister, thank you very much for your time.